This is a trig integral where we have cosine and sine raised to powers. So way back in a few sections ago, we did trig integrals, generic title for a dissection, but this is when you had sine to a power times cos to a power, dx. The easy cases are where one of the exponents or both are odd. And what do you do then? Well, then you can exploit that you have an extra sine or cosine by itself, make a nice u sub, and basically you're pretty much done. We have two even powers, and that's the third case, and that's the least fun. So we're going to use these two identities, apply them, and see what we're looking at. So I have them written down here. Let's go ahead and apply them. So we have six times, so cos squared replaced by one half, one plus cos. All right, this two, you don't, I just wrote an ambiguous two, that two looks kind of like an exponent. That's a really horrible coefficient. Do not write your coefficients like that. Make sure your coefficients, I try to write them a little bigger than I might normally write and make sure that they go all the way to the bottom right there. So it doesn't look like a superscript. Okay, that's cos squared. Sine to the fourth, remember sine to the fourth is sine squared squared. So we're actually looking at, we have a sine squared squared, which is this whole thing squared. So we have one half squared times one minus cos two x squared dx. Okay, a lot of halves here. So we have a half times a half times another half, which is an eighth. Uh, or you can do the six can uh, cancel with one of the halves down to a three. And then we have half squared, which is a fourth. So that'll be three fourths. All right, what in the world to do about these? Usually you have to distribute them. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. I am gonna write the one minus cos two x squared as one minus cos two x times itself. All right, why am I doing this? Well, these two factors are easy to multiply. Why? They're conjugate pairs. So when you multiply them, the outside inside terms cancel. So you get one, one times one is uh, one squared, which is one minus, now we get cos squared of two x. So again, I took those two and foiled them, but the outside inside terms cancel. That's why I reordered them and multiplied like that. Just work a little smarter and a little less hard. I recommend being smart when you can. Plenty of times to not be smart in life though. Okay, now we do need to foil these out. These are not difference of square, or these are not conjugate pairs because of this square right there. So the outside inside terms will not cancel as you will see. One times one is one, no problem. Minus will go outside one times negative cos two x is negative cos two x. Now the inside is negative cos squared two x. The last term, negative times negative, two wrongs make a right. Cos squared times cos is cos cubed. Okay. So, you can probably integrate one. You better be able to integrate one if you're watching this video. Uh, you could probably integrate cos 2x. My guess would be sine 2x, and that's almost correct. Uh, I think we need a one half sine 2x. The cos cubed isn't bad because what we're gonna do is break off one of the cos uh, and then use the what we were looking at earlier, uh, except now we have an odd power of cosine, which is great. And then this right here, we'll deal with separately. So I don't wanna write all this crazy stuff on one line. So antiderivative of one is x. I think this will be one half sine two x, I'm guessing, and now checking. So derivative of sine two x is cos two x times two, which will cancel the one half. 
Now I'm going to leave some space here for the other two. I'll just write my plus C over there. All right, let's do the other two separately, and then we'll come back and write them here. All right, cos squared 2x dx. All right, let's knock this one out first. What do we do? Well, we have an even power of cosine. Now my two, as I just spoke, this two is a bit ambiguous. It's in the parentheses, so I don't think anybody's assuming it's an exponent, but it should be written a bit lower and a bit bigger. There we go. Now everything is good in the world. Okay, I'm gonna use the identity we wrote down earlier, except this time, I'm gonna replace x by two x. So before it was one minus, uh, one plus cos two x, but now it's one plus cos two times the angle two x. So I just doubled the angle in both sides. I replaced x by two x. So we get one half, one plus cos four x. All right. Now, this antiderivative is pretty easy. Antiderivative of one is x. Now again, taking a guess. If you were okay with the last one, you can probably be very okay with this is one fourth sine four x. And again, I can check. Derivative of sine four x is cos four x times four, which cancels the fourth. Uh, let's distribute the half in. All right. So that's gonna be going in here. Now this is all subtracted. So it's minus one half x plus an eighth sine fourth x, or sine of four times x. Wow, not sine to the fourth, sine of four times x. You can always put an extra parenthesis in if you're a little worried about your handwriting. All right, last up, cos cubed two x. All right, said this one was not gonna be difficult. We're going to let, well, first of all, break cos squared, cos squared two x times just cos two x dx. All right, so that, that I underlined, I want all that to be du. In order for that to happen, u needs to be sine two x. So then du is two cos two x. We don't have a two, so move that as a half to the du side. Ooh, totally forgot the dx. All right, well, unfortunately, we got cos squared, not sine squared, but we can easily get a sine squared in there. Remember that cos squared plus sine squared is one. So cos squared two x plus sine squared two x is one, so cos squared 2x is one minus sine squared 2x, there we go. Make that sub. So I'm gonna make the regular substitution and then the u sub. This substitution is not a u sub. I am not changing variables here. That's why the dx doesn't change, still using x's. Now is time for the u sub. So now we're going to make that u sub. One minus u squared du, and there's a half that needs to go. And I'll put it at the front, all right. Easy antiderivative here, one half u minus u cubed over three unsub, so you assign 2x. And that's sine cubed 2x. All right, distribute the half. Okay. So that's gonna go up above one half sine 2x. Minus one six sine cubed. All 
Okay, good stuff. I don't know if much combines. This is like coincidentally on this one. It looks like sine that second term is going to cancel out. Let me get some orange going. I like orange for crossing out. So one half negative one half sine two x positive one half sine two x cancels. Depending on your problem, those two may not be canceling, but you can probably combine them in some way. If they were both plus a half, then they would just have one sine two x. Oh, it looks like the x's can combine as well. And what else can combine? I think that's it. All right, so x minus a half x is negative a half x. All right, I'm gonna cheat and add some extra room here. Three fourths x minus a half x is one half x minus one eighth sine four x minus one sixth sine cubed two x plus c. Okay, let's see what we're working with up here. Hmm, what in the world? I believe what I have is right. All right, well, first of all, they're taking out quite a bit more. So their coefficient of x is 12 over 32. Our coefficient of x is three over eight. Are those equal? I suck at numbers. Divide both of these by four. 12 over four is three. 32 over four is eight. Yes, so our coefficient of x matches. Sine of four x. All right, so they're using some identities, but I believe we should be okay like this. So I'm gonna leave the answer in this form and not worry about exactly matching what is right here. You can use some power reduction to change the form, but I think this one is uh, okay for our purposes.